But Israel has a PhD in deception. <laughs> because it's Dajjal at the back of this. The mastermind. And Israel would not want to wage a big war and appear to the world naked, clearly, as an aggressor. No, that's not deception. Israel has to wage her big war and make it appear as though she was only defending herself. Hmm? The only Muslim I know of who has had the capacity to be able to penetrate the deception that has been going on all these years. The only one I know of was a man who never went to Al-Azhar University. <laughs> now, he wasn't a sheikh. His name was Malcolm X. He's the only man I know of who had that eyes wish to see and could clearly recognize the strategy and the deception. Read Malcolm X. How is Israel going to launch this big war and yet get away from being perceived by the whole of humanity as the aggressor, blatant aggression? You have to come with a good strategy. The strategy is this. Ariel Sharon goes into Masjid Al-Aqsa with a thousand Israeli military with him, with their shoes on. With the full knowledge that this calculated act of extreme provocation must have a response, a fiery response. And as the flames of the new intifada emerge, you must keep it burning by committing upon the Palestinian people more and more atrocities that drive them into a greater and greater rage. This is planning. This is strategy. This is not happening by accident. As Israel unleashes this barbaric oppression upon the Palestinian people, you must have a television station which you plant amongst them which will cover this that your Egyptian television would not cover and your Jordanian government would not allow on Jordanian television so you create something called Al Jazeera and the Arab masses believe Al Jazeera is their station <laughs> This is the only place in the world we can get authentic information, Al Jazeera. Hmm? So Al Jazeera is now used to portray all the atrocities. And so around the, mass, around the Arab world, the masses only have to tune into Al Jazeera and they know what's happening. And so the Arab masses become more and more angry, more and more enraged. And guess who begins to tremble now? The governments, which are pro-American. The governments which have entered into peace treaties with Israel. These are the ones who are now trembling because their people are becoming more and more enraged. So Mubarak in Egypt and uh, Saudi Arabia, I don't know, is Fahad Abdullah and uh, Abdullah in Jordan and Sheikh Sabah in Kuwait, etc. Israel has to judge the temperature on the ground in the Arab world. And because Israel has a strategic military alliance with the United States of America, it is when Israel judges the temperature to be hot enough, only then will Israel give the go-ahead to the United States to attack Iraq. Only then. 
And you have to inform the whole world in advance that you're going to attack Iraq. So the masses must be expecting it. Why? So that when the United States attacks Iraq, you would have the kind of spontaneous outburst from the Arab masses that you want. That they will take to the streets in massive demonstrations. The kind which brought down Zulfikar Ali Bhutto in Pakistan. Hmm? The kind which brought down His Imperial Majesty, the King of Kings. Which one? Shah. Shahin Shah, the King of Kings. They tested this formula. They tested this formula because they were actively involved in all that drama in Iran. Oh, yes. Without in any way being uncharitable or lessening in any way my appreciation and my respect and the honor which I have for those who led the Iranian revolution. I have to admit that in addition to their sincere efforts and their struggle against the oppression of the Shah, that there were also others at work to help them without their even knowing it. So they have finessed this methodology of how to bring the masses out onto the streets. And this is what is about to occur. As the masses go out onto the streets, the ones who are going to be targeted are the pro-American regimes in the Arab world. The objective? To get one or more of these regimes to fall through massive demonstrations, anti-American and anti-Israeli demonstrations. Which one is likely to fall first? Let me stop. Come on. Huh? Jordan is correct. Jordan is correct. Which is why Abdullah has his bags packed already. <laughs> the reason why Jordan is the first to fall, likely to fall, is because more than half of the population of Jordan is Palestinian. And because Jordan shares a border with Israel. If the Jordanian government falls in consequence of the attack on Iraq and the Jordanian government or shall I call it the Anglo-Jordanian government <laughs> is now replaced by an anti-American, anti-Israeli and best of all a government declaring itself to be Islamic. If that happens, and the Jews are going to be praying for that to happen, then you will see television really coming of age for the second time. The first time was September 11th. Television will now get to work around the world. CNN leading the, the pack. And the media around the world will now be used to portray an impending scenario in which like the domino effect, governments around the world of Islam, they will claim, are now going to fall. And the world of Islam is rising up now. And one-eyed Muslims, of course, are going to believe it. The world of Islam is now going to rise up and all these Governments are going to be swept away and authentic governments representing the Muslim masses will now emerge. And therefore the Jews are going to have their throats cut. This is going to be the most dangerous moment in the entire life of the world of Jews. The media will portray it. If we don't do something we will all be slaughtered by these Muslim fanatics. Yeah. 
I tell you, this will be drama worthy of Hollywood when it comes. <laughs> huh? They must be hating me now for revealing their secrets. It is in this scenario that Israel will say, we have to do something. If we just sit here and do nothing, the state of Israel will be destroyed and the Jews will all be slaughtered. What can we do? They call it a preemptive strike. A preemptive strike. But it won't be a preemptive strike. It will be the most dazzling display of the magnificent application of state-of-the-art military technology that will leave even Uncle Sam in the backyard. A war like Uncle Sam has never seen and could never wage. That is what Israel is going to wage. Do they have the technology? I believe they have technology that even Uncle Sam doesn't have. It will be a lightning strike. Israel has to put on this magnificent display of military power and state-of-the-art technology beyond anything else that the world has ever known in order for Israel to impress upon mankind the validity of its credentials that is now going to become the new ruling state in the world. Hmm? Before <laughs> Fahad could even blink, the Israelis have taken over the Saudi oil fields. Hmm? and the Iraqi and the Kuwaiti oil fields. The United States, of course, will make some noise, and Britain will make some noise, but will they send troops? Not, of course not. The United, Se United uh, Nations Security Council is now going to be used by the rest of the world, particularly Uncle Europe, yeah, and Uncle Japan and the rest of the world. They will take the United Nations and seek to use the United Nations now to do something about this. Collective action to force Israel to withdraw. Because if Israel does not withdraw, Europe is going to be choked. And Japan is going to be choked. And as the United Nations is now being used for the first time in its history, an attempt is being made to use the United Nations effectively by the rest of the world. I anticipate that the United States Congress, the Senate, and the House of Representatives will now pass resolutions forcing the U.S. government to withdraw from the United Nations. And as soon as the United States withdraws from the United Nations, the United Nations can no longer sit down in New York, pack up, and move. So in the same way that the, United, the League of Nations collapsed, the United Nations now collapses. United Nations cannot be relocated anywhere else. No. Because the United States is the ruling state in the world. The League of Nations collapsed because the United States was not in the League of Nations. That's why the League of Nations collapsed. And so the United Nations cannot be relocated anywhere. No, it can't take it to Geneva. It's not going to work. And so Israel gets to hold on to the fruits of a naked aggression. And Israel takes control of the oil of the Middle East. It may be that it will be that 